Hello there, everybody, and welcome to part 55 of Pokemon Platinum. Last time, we became the champion of the world, aka the Sinnoh region. So, today, we're going to see what has changed now that we become champion. Okay, and the first things first is going downstairs. Because I'm so ecstatic that this feature actually works. Hikari! Jun came looking for you a little while ago. I don't know what it was about, but he was shouting about you needing to get on a ship at Snow Point City. You know how impatient he is. He was gone before I could even ask. Anyway, how's it going, kid? Is your project with Professor Roan coming along? Oh, you bet it is, yeah. For now, we have everything that we need. So, let's go over to Sand Gem Town and the Pokemon Center there to see what is the hubbub. Hi, Toast. Hey, Kari, let me take a look at your Pokedex. Awesome! You've seen every kind of Pokemon in Sinnoh. You have to show this Pokedex to Professor Rowan. Sure, but what does Rowan have to say about that? You know, let's just see what he has to say. Rowan's PC. You've spotted 210 Pokemon in Sinnoh. I see. You met all the Pokemon there are in Sinnoh. Hikari, I need you in my lab. I'll be waiting. And now that you have the PC, or now that you enter the Hall of Fame, you can see all of your Hall of Fame achievements or the party that you've entered the Hall of Fame with. And you can enter the Hall of Fame as many times as you defeat Cynthia. And I believe also, now that you have defeated the champion or something, or maybe it's like an entirely different game, I'm not entirely sure. It probably is, but, uh, you know, I, I could have sworn that you've unlocked uh, more, you know, more things, more wallpapers for your PC, but I think that's later games, actually. Uh, okay, let's go over to Rowan then. Mmm, Ikari, I was waiting. I've been waiting to see you. You've met every kind of Pokemon there is in the Sinnoh region. This will help immensely with my studies on Pokemon evolution. Oh, hey, there's a model that needed to be made for a remake. Greetings, Professor Rowan. It's been a very long time. I'll tell you, Sinnoh is certainly a long trip from Kanto. Of course, if it means meeting new Pokemon, there's no distance too great for the likes of us to travel. Oh, if it isn't my old colleague, Professor Oak. I should have expected as much from the world's authority on Pokemon. We always used to joke, where there are Pokemon, you'll find Oak. It's good to see that hasn't changed one bit. Bump my mic again, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Professor Oak, uh, let me introduce you to my young assistant. The real one, not that piece of toast. This youngster helped has helped filled every page of the Sinnoh Pokedex for me. Ah, very well, glad to meet you. As you've heard, I am. my name is Oak. I've been hearing a great deal about you from Professor Rowan lately. He's been exuberant in praise about a fantastic young trainer. I see that you live up to, no, that you surpassed his praise. You also got an impeccable sense of timing. You see, I had an errand to run for Professor Rowan on my visit here. He asked me to bring the data for the National Pokedex, you see. So, since you're here, let me upgrade your Pokedex with the National Mode. After all, there are many kinds of Pokemon in this world of ours. So basically, now we have the ability to catch every other Pokemon. I'm afraid it won't be easy to complete the National Pokedex. However, I'm sure that you'll make an honest attempt on our behalf. Have no fear, Hikari will get the job done. No, I won't. I don't want a piece of paper. By the way, Professor Oak, what compelled you to visit this region? Ah, yes. I heard that Pal Park is now open. If I remember correctly, it's at the end of Route 211. 221, I think. I don't know. Not 211. I don't know what I'm talking about. The Pal Park has a special system that attracts every imaginable kind of Pokemon from every region. I've come to make cer certain that the system is operating properly. Hikari, you should make an effort to visit the Pal Park, too. Oops, I'll be late for my meeting if I don't get along. Okay, it was a pleasure seeing you both. Bye now. 
Off he goes, as busy as ever. Now, Hikari, I have a gift here as a reward for completing the Suno Pokedex. A reward that's much better than a piece of paper, it's the Poke Radar! That's the Pokemon Radar! Or just Poke Radar for short. Use it and it will indicate grass patches where Pokemon are lurking. I prepared that to help my field assistants put together the Sinnoh Pokedex, but you took care of that. I'm sure it will be useful for your goal of filling the National Pokedex. Indeed it does! Sup, Toast? Hey, Kari, have you ever seen my kid sister? No! What, is she a piece of bread? <laughs> what? I'm so mean to him. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see what this Poke Radar is all about then, shall we? So, the Poke Radar is similar to the uh, VS Seeker, except it indicates where wild Pokemon are in the grass. The battery has run dry. Oh, oh, you need 14 more steps. Okay, that's fine. All right, all right, cool, cool, cool. All right. So, I believe the Poke Radar isn't affected by uh, the uh, repels at all. So, the Poke Radar has another function, actually. It has the alter It has another function in which it allows you to see some Pokemon that aren't found in the National Dex at all. So, basically, it's your way of trying to complete the Pokedex if you don't already have a friend that can trade you some of those fancy-pantsy version exclusives like Murkrow or Honchkrow or etc. So, yeah, on various routes throughout Sinnoh now, you can actually uh, find any other, any other Pokemon that are in the National Pokedex. And, now with that... You can actually go ahead and see Pokemon via the National Pokedex mode. Or you can just switch back to the good old-fashioned uh, Pokedex. Regular. The Sinodex mode, basically. Yeah, Sinodex. Because that's always exciting. Oh, and by the way, you can fully press the... You can press the up and down bu buttons on the uh, bottom screen in order to get to the bottom of the stuff. Or the bottom of the decks, rather. So, yeah, it's awesome. It's cool. It's fun. But I'm not going to exhaust myself going over, like, every single possible route just to show off just a few Pokemon that I definitely won't use in the future, since my team is already good enough as it is. After all, we beat the toughest trainer, so that's fine. But actually... What we want to do is, now that Pal Park is open, let's see what that's all about. Just so you're aware, or just so you remember, uh, you need to go over south of Sand Gem Town, and you need to surf over to down and then to the right, just so you can see uh, what, just so you can reach the Pal Park area. I lost, but at least I still have fun. Getting swept by Drapion. Obviously. After I fought this dude who had a Remoraid and a, uh... Uh, Floatzel. I can't believe I forgot myself for a second. Um, we can now see that the evil construction men are gone! Ah, Hikari! This is it! This is Pal Park! Pokemon from around the country can be brought here. In other words, Pokemon from places like Kanto and Hoenn. Just those places. Not Johto or anything, because screw Johto, am I right? This place also so happens to be where you compete to see how quickly you can catch these Pokemon. It's good to see you come to join us for a visit. What, did you just realize that I'm here? Let me give this trainer counter app for your Poke Edge. So, despite what the trainer counter might think, lead you to think it is, it's actually not. It tracks the Pokemon Radar's rankings. I plan to be in Eternus City for some time. Being here, I should make the best of my time studying the Pokemon of the Sinnoh region. Let's take a look at our Trainer Counter app. So, here in our beloved, beloved Trainer Counter is Bidoof. The only Pokemon that I'm probably ever going to find with this thing and shall be the number one Pokemon in America. 
We will love you forever, Bidoof. That short is really cool and fun. Anyway, let me actually save here. Going back to the title screen, I actually am really surprised and relieved that this feature actually works and I can actually show it. Because I just so happen to have a ROM of Pokemon Emerald that I've been saving for a special occasion. So, with the DS uh, GBA slot thingies that can only be accessible via the uh, DS, uh, regular DS and DS Lite, uh, you can choose to migrate every six Pokemon per day from either your copies of Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, Fire Red, or Leaf Green. So that's Amaza. <laughs> that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna be particular in my Pokemon choice as well, in one case. I don't know if I have any other cases. I know I definitely don't have one of them, but let's see how it goes anyway. Once you've chosen all of six of your Pokemon to migrate, you won't be able to do that for the rest of the day. You'll have to wait until tomorrow to transfer another six. And also, and pretty obviously, Pokemon can't be say can't be returned to the cartridges that they came from. So once they're here, they're here forever. So just be aware. Okay, and now with that, welcome to Pal Park. This is where the top-notch trainers come to demonstrate their Pokemon catching techniques to their peers. Oh? Are you maybe? Ah, you are Hikari! I've heard all the rumors about you. Word is you're a hot shot trainer? We'd be honored if you would participate in one of our catching shows. Yes, you agreed to participate. It's a happy day for me! Let's not waste any time. Let me explain how Pal Park works. I wrote the Pal Park manual for situations just like this. I don't need to explain, we're good. I would like to uh, participate now that we've migrated six of our Pokemon from Emerald. It's not the Emerald cartridge that I use for a Let's Play, it's uh, just a cartridge since that unfortunately has been lost, to that Emerald playthrough is now lost to time, so. Unfortunate. But that is where we must go on. Time marches on, so let's find our Pokemon then. And we found one. <laughs> so yeah, I've transferred uh, Blaz Swablu from Pokemon Emerald here. So basically, this is your way of catching, of transferring Pokemon from your earlier games to your newer games. Yeah, remember those? I certainly don't, but you probably do. So just as a reminder, in order to even do this, you need to have a Pokemon Emerald, Sapphire, Ruby, Fire Red, or Leaf Green uh, cartridge in the GBA slot of a regular DS or a DS Lite. Any newer model DSs and 3DSs don't have those. So basically the uh, DSi and the 3DS since, you know, that's always fun when Nintendo takes away backwards compatibility. Am I right, fellas? I am more than correct. God, Wobbuffet with lips is just so weird. <laughs> so yes, uh, Pokemon are just aren't just found in like the grassy areas. Depending on what Pokemon they are, they can be found in the various areas around Pal Park. So, for example, if a Pokemon were to live in a forest area, then they would be in the forest. If they were to be found in just the regular grasslands, they would be found in the grass. Any bug Pokemon would be found in the jungle. Any water Pokemon would be found in, you know, the uh, water. Not by fishing, though. Just regular surfing will do you very nicely. And park balls will always work, no matter what. They're basically akin to the master balls. Except this is just basically for transferring Pokemon and nothing else. Which, honestly, like, the transferring methods of Pokemon are just really weird. <laughs> like, in this game, you have to migrate them from your GBA to the DS. I get that. But why do we have to catch them again? <laughs> I don't know. 
yeah, I guess this is just what Pal Park is for. That's what the National Dex is for, so who cares? And, uh... Yeah, um, and in Gen 5, it's like a whole minigame thing where you have to, like, do it in a separate app, and then you gotta do all that thing, and this thing, and everything, and all the stuff. I am confused. <laughs> I forget what other Pokemon I transferred here, actually. <laughs> um... There's still, like, another Pokemon that I can find here. Maybe I can talk to this guy to see what's up. You haven't caught all your Pokemon yet, but no, I don't want to retire. I don't want to retire yet from the, uh, thing. Oh, and by the way, and by the way, you can retire from the menu if you really want to, but, uh, you want to catch all your Pokemans, right? Of course you do. So, uh, let me just find my, uh, let me just find the rest of my Mons here really quickly. Oh, here it is. <laughs> okay, I was wondering. Skarmory, that would be up that would be up in the mountains. Since Skarmory and Emerald is actually like a rare Pokemon that's found in the more mountainous regions. You definitely know where. And there it is. There's all six of our Pokemon uh transferred from another video game. Just remember, this is, this is a daily event, so once you do it today, you can't do it, like, you know, again today. So, time points, da -da -da -da, type points, da -da -da, and your total is 2996 points. That's an outstanding record. Kudos to you. It's time for your prize. Here it is. Cool, an orange berry. I can already buy, like, 2,000, uh, I can already buy, like, 2,000 of these, uh, you know, things. <laughs> the different prizes that you can get from the Powell Park catching shows are on screen right here. Honestly, they're, they can be either worth it or nah, but it is pretty nice, right? Right, you know, you know it's pretty nice. <laughs> anyway, you. Pow Park is so sin, what? Pokemon trainers are full of intensity here. I never seen some Pokemon. Would you show me if I had if you had one? Let me see. Pokemon that does nothing but eat and sleep. What was that Pokemon's name now? It's on the tip of my tongue. Well, what she's referring to is a Snorlax, but I don't have one. I don't have a Fire Red or Leaf Green ROM to translate to transfer that to, unfortunately. That's just there to basically make you get more uh, Poket Japs, basically. This girl will have two Poket Japs for you. One, if you show her a Snorlax, is a kitchen timer. Where it's just basically a kitchen timer. I don't know why you wouldn't use your uh, microwave or oven, but there it is. It's a kitchen timer. It's pretty neat. But the real prize and why I wanted to bring Kecleon over, which I thought she would do that, but no, is the color change app. If you show her a Kecleon after you showed her a Snorlax from Pal Park. The color changer actually will change the color of your Poketch. Well, not really the physical Poketch, but the inside. See, on the Poketch, you're stuck with the default green all of your life, unless you show Unless you show uh, Kecleon to that to that girl, and then you'd be able to change the color to, well, I believe red, and then blue, and then green, and blah, blah, blah. It's a form of customization that I wish was available naturally, but it just isn't. It's an app. I mean, not that it really matters anyway, because I probably didn't really need that anyway, but who cares? It, it's an app that I definitely won't get, but it's nice. And on the note of Poket Japs, there are actually two more that are, that you can technically get, but you can only get it through cheating because they were available through Nintendo events. And I'm not sure whether or not they were actually distributed, but here are the two. One is a stopwatch app. It's basically what it sounds like. It's a stopwatch app. And the other is an alarm clock. 
Again, basically what it sounds like. But, you know, you gotta admit, the graphics are cool on it, at least. And, yeah, minus those other Poké Chaps that I failed to get, unfortunately. <laughs> um, I believe that will basically cover every single Poké Chap that is available in Pokémon Platinum. So, the ones I'm missing, unfortunate, and unfortunately, I won't be able to get because... Uh, Playing through Fire Red and Leaf Green requires me to play through like a 10 hour video game that I just don't have time for and um, stuff. And I do have Kecleon. I just got to show a Snorlax first. <laughs> so again, that's unfortunate, but yeah, it's fine. And yeah, so I'm going to have to do it by cheating, but that's fine. Rowan's PC is now changed to Professor Oak's PC. And now it'll show how many Pokemon that you've caught so far. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty neat. Whenever you've migrated a Pokemon from a GBA to a DS, uh, you can actually see where they come from. They'll have the same natures, obviously, and the uh, same trainer IDs. However, just like with traded Pokemon, you can't actually rename them, so it's a bit unfortunate, but that's okay. That is a-okay. If you have plenty of save files on your GBAs, then that could give you an opportune chance to actually, to actually have a chance of winning at the lottery more and more at the uh, Jubilife TV. Now, I don't exactly remember where this is in Eterna City, where Professor Oak is. But I believe he will be actually in one of these houses because our next topic is something that I wish I could have the time for, but I got other shit to do. Okay, here he is. He's just right near the south exit. Ah, it's you! Good to see you! How is your Pokedex coming along? Capturing every Pokemon is no easy feat, I'll grant you that. But I'm sure you can accomplish it. Ah, yes! An acquaintance from Kanto has sent me something quite interesting. I think you make better use of it than I ever could. So you get an upgrade that will let you evolve Porygon into Porygon 2. I understand there's a Pokemon that evolves when it is traded while holding the upgrade. Incidentally, this is, and this is an entirely different topic. I've heard that there have been sightings of very rare Pokemon. The legendary bird Pokemon, Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. They've been spotted at various locations here in Sinnoh, no less. Why, you may be lucky enough to see them for yourself in your journeys. Yeah, exactly. We're going to see them. We're not going to catch them because roaming Pokemon suck. <laughs> Uh, okay, so piling on the fact that you may have not caught Mesprit yet, uh, now you have three other random uh, floating or roaming Pokemon to worry about. The Kanto legendary birds are here in Pokemon Platinum, and yes, there are three of them, and they're really, really freaking hard to catch. So... Why don't we go over them, shall we? <laughs> the repel trick always works very nicely because these legendary birds are level 60. Uh, hello? Hello? And wouldn't you know it, the very first one. <laughs> Here we go with Articuno. So Articuno is interesting to say the least. Articuno is an ice flying type, meaning it will definitely get murder lurtled by Stealth Rock whenever it gets sent out, so that's already a negative. And another unfortunate negative that it has is that it's not it's not dealing in attack stats at all. I mean, 95 special attack is definitely not that bad, but it's a far cry from what from what it once was in Pokemon uh, Red, Blue, and Yellow. It's more of a defensive legendary bird, which is really odd, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's short of any moves that it can learn to take advantage of that special attack. 
like, obviously, you have, you know, Ice Beam, you've got, you know, the Hidden Powers, and whatever else. Yeah, Articuno is definitely not what it once was. But, at the very least, its special move pool foam move tier just can actually be pretty good with Icy Wind, Ominous Wind, Swift, Signal Beam, and... Yeah, I definitely would have to say it's definitely not the worst. When fighting it, it's level 60, of course, so... And because it's a roaming legendary, it's going to flee the very first chance that it gets, so... If you want to catch it in something like a quick ball, you better do it, because it's going to run away the very second that you make a move. So, unfortunate that I must, unfortunately, pass on these. But, eh. <laughs> I mean, what can you really do in a situation like you have more roaming legendaries than I already used up my Master Ball, and the way to get more is to get incredibly lucky, lucky at the lottery. I don't know. <laughs> so... And, and yeah, this is the case for every single legendary bird. They're level 60, and unless you have a Pokemon that's really fast and can use Mean Look like a Crobat, you are not going to be able to get these things. No siree, you're not. Oh my god, why are you here again? <laughs> I thought I was going to get like Zapdos or Moltres. I want to talk about them more than you. No, bye. Stop showing up here! I don't want to have to talk about you again. You are not the only person. You are not the only bird. You are <laughs> not the only bird. I can try to catch you if you want to. Like, do you really want to be caught that badly? Okay. No? Okay. Fine. Screw you. Screw you. <laughs> oh my god, are you actually kidding me? What? Why is Articuno like the only Pokemon that I can ever find here? Why is it that this is a thing? Why is this happening? Oh, thank God I can finally talk about someone else. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. We got Moltres, the Firebird, because Firebirds are not, ke are not cringe and they are very keck. Moltres is a mixed attacker flying fire type. So, unfortunately, rock in an era where rock types are buffed, yeah, no, it's not going to do you any favors. But, again, the move pool for move tutors is definitely not that bad at all. Ominous Wind, Heat Wave, uh, Air Cutter, and the like. Yeah, it can actually be pretty good if you really just wanted to be a setup Pokemon. On top of that, you get Heat Wave naturally by leveling up. Uh, well, you get Sunny Day at level 85. I don't know why you wouldn't get it at the lower, lower levels just to set up, but you know what? Cool. You get Ancient Power. I'm really only talking about, like, the move pool for special moves that it can learn. Because, really, that's just basically what it does best. Unfortunately, though, for TMs, you're not going to do any favors there. You're only going to learn the Fire TMs, Flamethrower, Fire Blast, and Overheat, unfortunately. So... Another one that could be good, but if you're going to do something with it, then at the very least, just teach it Sunny Day by TM and then just boost everything with fire moves. I didn't explain that very well, but at least the physical move pool is really good for TMs like Aerial Ace and whatever else. <laughs> Plus, you can get U-Turn, which is pretty good. All right, finally, I can... Talk about something other than Articuno, because Articuno was really the favorite. It seemed to be, like, the favorite of the game, honestly. I don't know why that was, but you know what? That's just fine by me, just so I don't have to talk about, like, Articuno ever again in my life, unless there is a video game out there in which I have to talk about Articuno. I don't want to do this shit again. Ayo, the king! Yeah! <laughs> Zapdos, baby! Should be noted that every single legendary bird has pressure for its ability, meaning that against it, you use two PP instead of one. Zapdos! Yeah, the speedy little special attacker that really could. Electric flying type is still unique for its time. And because of that, it's still rather unique. <laughs> 
in that one of its only weaknesses is rock types. Plus, it resists its regular damage towards, uh, you know, electric types. So the fact that it resists that and only is weak to rock and ice. Yeah, really good off right off the bat. Plus, again, special move pool. You got discharge. By level up, you get ancient power, discharge. You get thunder, obviously. But it's a lot better to teach a thunderbolt if you still have that TM. Uh, yeah. Shockwave. Yeah, you got shockwave, charge beam. I'm just listing off moves to take advantage of its special attack. And besides, why would you ever have heat wave on Moltres when you can have heat wave on Zapdos instead from move tutors? <laughs> Seriously, it's just that good. Like, Zapdos, even to this day, is still the king in my eyes. Even if your defenses are not as good as it could be. You know, 85 physical defense, 90 special defense. Yeah, I still think you're the king. So yeah, it's just, yeah, <laughs> it's good. I definitely didn't do myself any favors by explaining these legendary birds. <laughs> well, I almost had it anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, I almost had it, but Unfortunately, that's just how it is. I'm not going to be catching these legendaries, by the way. Because I already wasted my Master Ball on Mesprit just so I could complete the set. So, as much as I would like to, uh, no. Anyway, that will about do it for today. Next time on Pokemon Platinum, we're going to keep on traveling the Sinnoh region to see what is up with everything. <laughs> anyway... See you guys on the next time. Thank you for watching and goodbye.